the figure dropped to 71%, and in November, it dropped again to 68%. Uh, there can be two reasons for that. The second wave, and maybe also airlines adapting their network to the slow uh, recovery of uh, the traffic. And also, we have made an assessment of the intra-African connectivity. We have seen uh, for November that uh, uh, we have a drop of 90% of connectivity uh, within uh, the continent. This is a very, very serious concern. Next slide. At uh, AFRA, we have been working since uh, the beginning of this pandemic on different actions. Uh, in April, we have organized a webinar and uh, we have defined a nine pillars recovery plan for uh, members and the secretary. We also made an appeal to African governments to assist their airline on March. And we made another appeal to development and financial institutions in May. Under the pillar number six, which is cost management, we have put already in place a capacity sharing portal for uh, airline fleet optimization. And also uh, the, this uh, ATU project is uh, related to cost management in uh, building capacity uh, at uh, reduced cost. Africa represents uh, between two uh, to three percent of uh, uh, air transport markets, and uh, we we are seeing a lot a lack of uh, sufficient training facilities on the continent. African airlines have been uh, losing money for uh, ten consecutive years. Only a few ten airlines in the world, Air Maroc, succeeded to be profitable during the last years. Most African airlines rely on non African ATOs, uh, leading to high cost of uh, training. For that reason, the project we are presenting today is uh, very important for uh, AFRA, our association. We are pleased to be engaged on it with Prodigy and the Ghana Civil Aviation Authorities. At AFRA, we are fully committed to make it a success. There is no sustainable air transport system without a reliable and cost-effective capacity building and infrastructure. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Dafte, for your remarks. I now have the pleasure to invite Captain Sheju, Managing Partner, Prodigy Avia Solutions, to make his remarks. Captain Sheju, how is it going? Thank you very much, Maureen. Uh, SG, thank you very much for the invitation uh, to be at your, at your office. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good day to you. This is your captain speaking. Welcome on board this flight Prodigy AFRA 001 to Aviation African Success City located in Africa. It's a pleasure to have you all on board today with our latest uh, model of aircraft, Airbus Boeing and Royal Bombardier aircraft today, <laughs> when Africa and the world is facing a great deal of uncertainty. As all of us know, the aviation sector has been one of the most adversely affected, impacted uh, industry uh, due to the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Still, uh, we strongly believe that uh, it represents a huge opportunity to create, innovate, and provide strategic solutions for the African market. With the implementation of uh, EFCTA, uh, African Technology Trade Agreement, and other trade policies, which will enable a unique business environment in the future years on our continent, we are convinced and we believe that it is completely undeniable that the aviation sector will play a pivotal role uh, in unlocking the African uh, full potential. Uh, with the youngest population globally being in Africa, uh, we must involve the African youth and accord them due support 
in the journey towards finding long-lasting solution for the continent. And that doesn't only uh, restrict to obviously the aviation sector. As we are obliged to rebuild and redefine the aviation sector, innovative thinking, bold decision, creative uh, opportunities to be materialized are required with capacity building for the youth to be at the center of our strategy. On behalf of Prodigy Aviation Solution and the entire team, we are excited for the exchange of ideas that we are going to initiate today with all of you. And we believe that we are right now putting the foundation of uh, an improved aviation uh, landscape you know, for the continent. We believe that this conversation to be initiated today will vector us into the right direction and we build a stronger and sustainable industry. So please sit back, relax, enjoy the Afra Prodigy hospitality. I'll be expecting a thunderstorm of blue sky today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Captain, for your uh, warm welcome. You're all on board and you're ready for today's flight. Next, we have uh, remarks from Ghana. Uh, um, the, we are informed that uh, uh, GSEL DG had an urgent engagement and will be joining us in the course of the uh, work webinar. Uh, we proceed to uh, remarks by the Minister of uh, Aviation Office, Mr. Amin Abdurrahman, Director of Cabinet, Minister of Aviation. Mr. Rahman, you have the floor. Yes, thank you very much. Um, the Secretary General of AFRA, Captain uh, Idris Kidu, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me first start by extending the greetings from my Honorable Minister, Honorable Joseph, Joseph Kofiada, who would have liked to be part of this program, but as uh, duty calls demands, he's been taken away to Cape Coast to inspect a new airport we are proposing to build as part of our, our programs as a country. I must also indicate that um, the managing director of Ghana Airports Company has accompanied the minister and I am told that they will be back very shortly to join us. Um, with this said, let me start by saying that we are happy and delighted to be part of this uh, program. Uh, I must say that this is a very laudable initiative that is intended to actually um, bring out issues affecting the aviation industry in Africa as a whole, particularly with regards to capacity building that a lot of African countries are lacking. And as a country, the vision of the government of Ghana is actually to establish Ghana as an aviation hub within the West African sub-region. And we are doing this by coming out with a number of strategies that will serve as the enablers to enable us achieve this vision to enhance aviation connectivity and aviation activities for the whole of Africa. As a country, we have set in motion a number of strategies and programs, including the establishment of a home-based career, a massive infrastructure development, development and establishment of an aviation training organization in partnership with uh, Prodigy Aviation Solutions, establishment of an aircraft maintenance repair and overhaul facility, establishment of a cargo facility, a fixed base operator facility, and most importantly, development of regional airports across the country. Now, you will realize that the government has put some level of premium and importance in the aviation sector of Ghana. And this has started yielding some fruits. Currently, we have established a training institution called the Ghana Training at, at, at Ghana Aviation Training Academy. But that is limited to only the training of you know, safety engineers and then uh, regulators. But we have put in motion, and discussions have gone far with 
prodigy having solutions to establish a state of the art aircraft training organization. We have had a series of discussions with them. A feasibility has been developed and we are almost on the verge of coming up with this training institution to take care of capacity building needs of professionals within our sub region. You realize that the training organizations are confined to most parts of East Africa, North Africa, and Southern Africa. And there's that gap in Central Africa and the West African sub-region. And so what we are seeking to do with Prodigy Avia Solutions is to ensure that we come up with this facility to take care of the capacity needs of Central and Western Africa. The government in trying to also establish Ghana as, as an aviation hub, apart from the development of the ATU or the establishment of the, of the ATU, is to ensure a massive infrastructural drive and expansion. And so that has seen Ghana now upgrading two of their major airports into an international one, apart from what we already have in Accra, the Kotoka International Airport. The Kumasi Airport is being elevated to an international airport and work is almost about completing. The Tamale Airport is also being elevated to an international airport. And that will be, or that will serve as an alternative to the Kotoka International Airport in case of any emergency. And so we are seeking to put up an aircraft maintenance repair and overhaul facility in Tamale and also add a very big cargo facility to make it very serviceable. In the long term, we are also seeking to establish what we call the fixed base organization for private jets. And then also expand airport infrastructure and airstrips across all regions of the country. So all these developments are the key indicators or the, the key enablers that we are seeking to undertake to make sure that Ghana becomes an aviation hub within the sub-region. In recent times, we have had a number of engagements with, with um, Prodigy Avian Solutions, particularly with regards to the establishment of the ETU. And we are very confident and positive that in the very near future, not too long from now, we are coming on board with a very strategic ETU that will be established to bridge the capacity needs of professionals in the aviation sector in our sub-region. A lot has been done in the sector, but I think that my colleagues from Ghana Civil Aviation Authority and the Ghana Airports Company Limited, when they do join us, will speak more to most of the other projects that are going on. But let me also add that in the last few months, we have brought on board some two strategic interventions that are intended to ensure safety and security of aircraft and passengers in our sub-region, and especially within the greater the, the craft flight information region. This includes the establishment of the aircraft Accident and Incident Investigation Bureau, which law has been passed and the Secretariat has been set up or the Bureau has been set up. And we have also just two weeks ago passed a law to decouple air navigation services from the regulatory functions of the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. So now 
the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority will concentrate on regulatory issues while the Air Navigation Services will concentrate on the key safety and security issues. So all these activities coming together are feeding into our vision of becoming an aviation hub in the South region. And I must say that we are beginning to see the fruits. In the last Akio mission that came, Ghana emerged, as you are aware, as one of the best in Africa in terms of aviation security and safety. And this has also gone a, a long way to attract a lot of traveling public and passengers to Accra, to Kutuka. And it's, it is my pleasure to inform you that just in the last year past in 2019, Ghana achieved a threshold, passenger threshold or throughput of 3 million annually. And this was very remarkable. So what I'm seeking to say and to inform the rest of our audience is that capacity building is indeed very, very paramount. For as long as we will want to improve aviation and aviation industry in our part of the world. So let's keep on encouraging our partners and stakeholders to invest in capacity building such as what we are seeking to do with Prodigy Avia Solutions in Ghana. So on this note, let me rest my address and to thank everybody who has played a role in letting us having this program. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Abdul Rahman, for your remarks. It's indeed uh, very heartwarming and um, uh, encouraging to hear in detail what the government of Ghana is putting in place to support aviation and the priority that uh, you have accorded aviation in your plans. Um, we'll be joined by uh, the other representatives from Ghana in the course of the webinar, and we look forward to hear more from them. Uh, we now proceed to the first presentation of the day. Aviation remains critical in the development of many vital economic sectors. However, the need for highly qualified aviators will be more acute to support intra-Africa trade, tourism, and regional integration efficiently. Hence, AFRA contributing to human resource development covers soft managerial skills and operational and safety competencies. The association started a new program to train 100 qualified instructors in five years, to disseminate these future trainers all over the continent and blossom next generation aviation professionals. The Prodigy AFRA partnership supplements an ongoing training uh, activity plan by AFRA to propose a cost effective solution to recurrent simulator training close to Western and Central Africa bases. To uh, tell us more about uh, this and uh, about AFRA's plans and initiatives on training, we have Mr. Gausu Konate, Director of Technical and Operations at AFRA, and Mr. Riyad Bowoni, AFRA Training Manager, who will make the presentation. Gausu and Riyad, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Maureen. Uh, I will start on a positive note because uh, obviously you do it here, but uh, African airlines are adjusting capacity because of the COVID situation. Uh, to me, we can accelerate this. Uh, I'm taking the opportunity of the fact that um, Africa continent free trade area being hosted in Accra. Uh, this is maybe a good time for us to see how both uh, that program of AUC on trade and the second program of AUC again on liberalization SATAM uh, will help us to make that acceleration. 
Indeed, uh, for me, the implementation of Africa continent free trade area requires two things. First, the industrialization. The industrialization of the raw material, uh, which is usually referred as commodity, and the prices are fixed through speculation somewhere in London. So if we move away from exporting these raw material and uh, manufacture products, then again, the Africa continent free trade area will help us because it removes obviously the tariff among African states so that to boost the exchange, the trade exchange between the African states, which is currently at the modest level of 15% only. Uh, if we refer to intra-Europe, the trade rate is 60%, and in intra-Asia area, you have 70% of exchange of trade among these Asian states. So even if we fix ourselves of doubling our figure, from 15% to 30, I am sure that will induce new city fair uh, logistic support. And the existing city fair will definitely also be reinforced if we also exchange uh, using that uh, uh, flagship program of on trade. Now, it, well, in the process of doing this, if we also implement SATA, which is liberalization, it will also, through competition, strengthen the service providing of air transport to these new city players, and where also the traffic will be being uh, strengthened, as definitely air traffic always follows trade. A good example for you in this pandemic period is because we do have many PPE coming from China, you can see from China to all over the world, the traffic of air cargo have increased considerably. So this is what we want to make sure we use as a lever to increase uh, the size of Africa uh, middle class and also to increase the takeaway in terms of uh, the power of purchasing. Now, if you follow these two programs then, you see the more we trade among ourselves, the more opportunity we provide to air transport. The more we liberalize, the easier we provide logistic support to exchange of trade. So I hope you are seeing uh, what is in your screen there, but we are following the virtuous cycle where both uh, SATAM and the Africa continent program are supporting each other. And obviously it goes increasingly. So which means the volume of trade will be increasing and the need for tra air transport also will be increasing, requiring even more airline in future and therefore more pilot more cabin crew more technician so i hope with uh, this i have been able to show you uh, the way these two uh, program will help us to accelerate uh, the growth of air transport in the region uh, being clearly is a uh, put in AFRA strategic plan uh, through the type of exercise where we encourage increase of revenue and reducing cost. And definitely this uh, program is in line with that. Having said that, uh, Maureen, I think I will call upon uh, now Riyadh to proceed with the presentation if you move to the next slide. Thank you very much, uh, Gausu, for giving us uh, an overview of the relation, uh, relationship between uh, trade, traffic, and uh, the three projects uh, 
of uh, African Union, um, SATAM, FCFTA, and uh, the Free Movement of People and Goods. Uh, before we proceed to the next slide, um, we'll uh, do uh, our first poll question. Um, now, allow me to launch the poll. And uh, our question is, how would you rate the level of impact of the lack of availability of adequate training facilities within Africa on the growth of aviation? So we have the first uh, response is little or no impact. The other option is, is it medium impact or is it high impact? I'll leave the poll open for the next 30 seconds. And uh, as we wait for the poll to close, uh, allow me just to highlight that Afra uh, was born in Ghana. It's uh, quite a good coincidence that we have all this support from the government of Ghana for this uh, project that uh, we have seen so far. And we are really um, grateful. We express our appreciation as Afra to uh, the representatives of Ghana who are uh, with us during this webinar. We have a few more seconds to go, 10 seconds, I will close the poll. Okay, so uh, end of the poll, and uh, let me share the results. Um, in terms of the highest to the lowest number of responses, uh, we have high impact, 76% of uh, the participants feel that the level of impact of the lack of availability of training facilities is huge on the growth of aviation. Uh, we have 14% uh, uh, of uh, responses that this is of medium impact, while uh, minimal, that's 10%, indicate that this is of little or no impact. So now uh, we'll proceed to the next slide, and uh, I now invite Riyadh to do the presentation. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Mr. Konati. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Riyad Bawani, the AFRA training manager, and I will take you through the coming four slides of this presentation, where I will uh, talk about one of our projects, which is the IDPA, the AFRA Instructor, the AFRA Instructor Development Program. And also, I will highlight some of the benefits of the partnership between AFRA and Prodigy to the African aviation industry. The AGA res resolution 51 slash 12 gives the green light to start our AFRA instructor development program project. You can hear me? Hello? Yes. Uh, Yes, uh, to start the project and to develop 100 of highly qualified aviation instructors in uh, the coming five years, which means 20 instructors per year. In spite of uh, the restriction of travel, and by the end of 2020, 17 instructors awarded the IATA Corporate Instructor Diploma. This is for uh, the first year of 2020. But for the next coming four years, AFRA is seeking a financial support from our financial institution to support and sponsor our very important project, the IDPA, because we strongly believe that this project is, a, is the best solution to mitigate the shortage of the instructors in Africa. And also it's a solution for the cost reduction. It's reduced the training cost which means that we will rely on the African uh, instructors to facilitate our courses instead of uh, calling instructors from outside the continent, which will increase the training cost. And also we customize our African solution to our African challenges and problems. And also this is to support the development of aviation and other case of economic, uh, of economic sectors in Africa. Next slide, Moon. Next slide, please. 
what is the added value of uh, this partnership between uh, AFRA and Prodigy? In line with the, the AFRA strategic objectives and uh, the recovery plan, this will, ex this will expand our ATO training menu and also will expand our uh, training facilities provided by, uh, by, our, uh, by our ITOs in Africa, especially when we talk about the simulator, which is the, a very costly uh, facility that will be provided by uh, our Prodigy partner. And also, uh, this is a cost saving by bringing simulator training to close and to base for many airlines. So there is no need for uh, the pilots to travel for six or seven hours to do a recurrent training outside the continent while we have these uh, facilities and we have the instructors to do this training. Next slide, please. Um, allow me to um, introduce the next poll question uh, before we proceed to the next slide, Riyadh. Okay. So I've launched the poll. The question is, what is your main pain point on training? We have the option one, high cost of training. B, lack of adequate facilities within the sub-region. C, brain drain. Tell us more, what are your main pain points on training? Your main challenges. Okay, um, the, the poll question is running for one minute. We have uh, 20 more seconds to go. <laughs> 20 more seconds to go. Okay, so I'm now ending the poll questions. Thank you very much for participating and for your responses. Um, share the results. We have um, the highest number of responses at 64% that um, we have indicated that the lack of adequate facilities within the sub region for training is their main challenge uh, on training. We need this is what the project seeks to address. We seek to address the issue of uh, availability of training facilities within the continent. And the other um, challenge, which is at 45%, is on the high cost of training. Uh, the option C, brain drain, we did not receive any uh, participant response indicating that this is one of their main pain points. Could be it's, um, one, it's, a, it's among the list of the challenges that uh, the airlines are facing. Thank you for uh, your participation. The poll. Next slide, please. Okay. Yeah, you have the floor. Yes. Now we will talk about the benefits of the African uh, the benefits of this uh, partnership to the African aviation industry. This is will uh, fast track uh, the resumption of the operation during uh, post uh, COVID-19. Uh, and also will uh, give a competitive recurrent pilot training rates in the region. As we know, uh, all the African states are restricted to travel to Europe, except, Ru except Rwanda. That will give us a great lesson. We need to rely on our resources. We need to rely on our human resources and we need to have our facilities in our continent. So uh, if there is anything happens in the future, we have all what we need here. And maybe we can also close our continent as they did. OK, this is also will reduce a travel cost. So as I mentioned before, uh, the pilots will not travel for six hours or seven hours to Europe to do the recurrent training, while we have uh, the adequate uh, simulators and the training in our region, and especially for Prodigy, the, the position is uh, very strategic in the WACAF region. Also, this uh, partnership will, will be an effective contribution to the African economies 
direct and uh, indirect job opportunities. For those example who will work in the ATO, it's a great opportunity and there are many jobs. And also those who will benefit from the training, they will work anywhere else but inside our continent for sure. It's, a, it's an efficient supply to increase the number of qualified African aviator, aviators for the next generation. We are preparing for the future with our human resource and with our training facilities. And we have everything to, to, uh, to uh, overcome our burdens with our resources without relying on the others. Next slide, please. The conclusion, now to conclude. Giving the significant effects of COVID-19 pandemic, Afra Prodigy Partnership presents a very timely and welcome reprieve. In the long run, we view this as a major step towards growth and sustainability of the aviation industry in Africa. Therefore, AFRA appeals to the African aviation industry stakeholders to support this initiative and also to benefit from its success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Riyadh and uh, Gausu, for your presentation. Um, for the next uh, 10 minutes, we'll take the questions from the floor and uh, give our feedback. Um, so we start with the first question. Uh, from Francis Olivier Dinoc, he asks, what are the requirements to be part of the instructor's program? Gautou? Okay, uh, the, the idea is as uh, mentioned by Riyadh, but we build a strong base of high qualified instructor disseminated uh, uh, throughout the continent. So the idea is these uh, instructors are everywhere in the sub-region so that when we are doing a particular uh, type of course uh, we have instructors available on that particular subject in that sub-region uh, sub so that uh, we again minimize cost. So we want to have uh, aviators of the future generation developed by high qualified and within Africa and closer to home. So you can see from there, but the criteria will be obviously uh, being uh, an SME in your subject, being probably African and preferably uh, working either uh, in African airline or African civil aviation as this program will be uh, tackling all uh, area, uh, area of uh, aviation training. I hope I respond to the question. Thank you, Aldo. So I think that more of um, the, the aspect which was being uh, sought was if uh, an individual would be interested to be part of this program, what would be the requirements? Well, if the individual wants to be part of this program, uh, please first go through your own, uh, I will say, either airline or a CAA or air navigation service provider and, and then uh, so that uh, the AFRA will be getting your uh, application through a sponsored um, uh, potential uh, institu African institution. Uh, and therefore, obviously, the, as I say, the criteria of being SME is important. So if you, if you, if you are, let's say uh, an instructor of high level of, of SMS, for example, and uh, you work for an airline or an air navigation service provider, uh, the only thing we will be trying to add yeah. to your SME is now your skills in training, because we want to make sure that uh, we use highly qualified to develop more aviators in Africa. Thank you very much. I hope that this um, fully answers your question. Um, the next question we have um, from uh, Bereket. What are the core subjects on which instructors are required to qualify? Okay, if it is a requirement before coming, obviously it is 
any SME areas, as I said, I just gave an example. However, the object, what we are going to develop are now the pedagogic side of it, the communication ability side of it, on how you present your courses, and so on and so forth. So these, these are, and this is why, uh, if you remember in our presentation, uh, the first set we took, we, the 17 we, you, have, uh, you have seen, we took them through what is IATA is calling the diploma. So in that diploma, you have a, a, a total five subjects, uh, different subjects to accomplish. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next question from Joao George, who's one of our AFRA CEOs, um, and uh, we are happy to acknowledge your presence uh, as the fourth CEO who's uh, participating in this webinar today. And um, Joao's question and, and comment is, I would like to suggest we adapt the change of brain drain concept to an export of knowledge approach. We have a lot of raw material, young, intelligent, eager to learn. Young women and men in an, and an ATO makes them exportable to the benefit of all. We totally agree with you, uh, Joao. And uh, he asks, can we adopt this and move on with the project? Uh, Joao, thank you for that comment. I really appreciate it. And you are really reading in the brain of Afra. Actually, we have a, a, a project uh, which is currently on. Uh, it is uh, on MRO uh, with uh, a, a, a partner located in the US where we are promoting uh, MRO in Africa who, who have already have either EASA or FAA, FAA uh, certifi certified uh, MROs. This, uh, just with that same project, we have one which fit nicely with your proposal, where we want now to make sure we use even instructors, technical instructors from Africa to go and train and teach in the USA. So I like what you are proposing. And uh, we think as much footballers have been exported that way to Europe, uh, with the ATU's uh, number increasing, and quality of people who will be trained there, who will go in that direction definitely by exporting and uh, qualifying uh, people outside. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is, um, what could be the plans to connect ATOs in the region of Afra? I think this one uh, will get uh, these insights from the presentation that uh, will uh, be made by Prodigy Avia Solutions. Uh, so Lucas, uh, <coughs> How that response uh, after we are done with the presentation. Uh, I think we can take one more question um, before we proceed. And uh, we have this question from uh, Junior Kialanda. And he asks the presentation is more theory. I would like to know technically, with the more details, the program after we put in place to achieve this target. For example, the facilities, the program, the instructors to be qualified to see. Uh, he actually is requesting for more details. I think this one also will be addressed by uh, Captain uh, yeah. in his presentation. And I think we can now proceed to the next presentation. Uh, we'll have uh, from Prodigy Avia Solutions, Captain Sheju, who is the managing partner, and uh, Mr. Moses Mwana, aviation consultant, who will make this presentation. Captain and Moses, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Maureen. Uh, we can see the next slide. So we will be looking, as uh, some of you have requested, uh, in more details into um, the project of the ATO in Ghana. But uh, first and foremost, it will be very interesting for everybody to understand what the project of this solution is about. So it is an um, aviation consultancy company that was created uh, about uh, five, six years ago uh, to headquarter uh, located in the UK, but we mainly focus on, on Africa. Uh, we have representation in Nigeria, in Dakar, and recently in Cameroon. So as you can see, we pretty much cover um, the Western Central African 
African region. So we, since we started our operation, uh, our consultancy uh, operation, we have been working closely with the uh, airlines uh, in, uh, in Senegal, in, uh, in Ghana, in Nigeria, uh, providing them different type of solution uh, varying from uh, asset management, uh, uh, a few audits, uh, assistance in IOSA certification. We uh, manage to uh, operate a few charter flights. We do, uh, we did also some crew leasing operation. Obviously, as you can imagine, uh, most of those contracts were actually terminated due to the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19. We are in the process um, in one of those regions to um, uh, conclude on the uh, an m and operation, uh, an airline being acquired by a private uh, uh, construction company. Uh, AOC support, uh, we have an ongoing operation in Malta, a documentation system, etc. So yes, uh, we have a wide scope of uh, service and solution that we would like to uh, put to the profit of uh, African uh, uh, stakeholders. Now, to understand how we became very concerned about uh, the, um, the issue of the training in Africa, two reasons. Uh, during our, our different audits uh, that we had to uh, execute uh, over the past couple of years, it was obvious uh, that uh, many of the reason behind the lack of um, uh, achievement on some particular project within the airline was due to the lack of expertise and then clear understanding on, should I say, some of the key players. Uh, because they, they were coming from different backgrounds and then uh, the additional different being highly technical oriented. Uh, this is not an industry to be, uh, to be uh, should I say, play around with. And also, um, with two uh, partners, uh, we managed to uh, redistribute their training capacity in Africa, uh, which allowed now African airlines to go and train overseas. And then uh, we had had the uh, advantage to look at how much money was being spent you know, in training. And then the, the idea of creating a solution for the continent actually came to life. So uh, for the next few slides, I will hand over the control to uh, my colleague, um, Mr. Moses, who will attend to the next few slides. Thank you. Moses, you have Thank control. you, Captain. I have control. Next slide, please. OK. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, greetings to everyone. Um, I will just use a few minutes to take you through some important projections about the aviation sector in Africa and why it is imperative for us to have uh, a training organization within the sub-region that can meet uh, the competencies that we require. You know, one of the important things about the airline sector or the aviation sector in general is that it's capital intensive and also with a lot of specialized skill set. So it's difficult to run uh, an aviation uh, organization without specialized competencies and so that is why it's very important for us to get a training organization that has the capacity to produce uh, the real talents that we need and if we look at some of the projections in Africa um, a 20-year outlook from from Boeing and other major industry players uh, first of all you see that uh, the GDP in Africa and especially within this region is forecasted to be the second uh, with the highest growth rate within the world, between 2.6 to about 3.5. And uh, Boeing also forecasts that the, the, the continent would be requiring many more aircraft uh, in the next few years in order to meet the demand of air travel within the continent. And also, uh, if you look at Boeing's 2020 pilot and technical outlook forecast, you see that uh, Africa would be needing, and generally the world, and Africa in particular will be needing some 23,000 pilots and 23,000 technicians and about 26,000 cabin crew. And all of these specializations would require that they have to be trained. And if we have to train them, we also have to train them in Africa. And if we move further, you look at the growth of the, uh, the, the implementation of some important trade deals in Africa, like the single African air transport market and the African continental free trade zone, you see that it's giving an opportunity for the industry to grow further. 
and because the industry has to grow further, it means we also need to uh, avail commensurate skill sets so that they can grow together with this and then meet the, uh, the, the objectives of the public and all of that. And so if you look at the African market, uh, air market alone is estimated to be about uh, 215 uh, uh, 215 billion US dollars. So that's really much. And we cannot imagine that all of the money that we invested in this sector, we would use, uh, we would have to send crew out of uh, the region or elsewhere for training. So that is why it is important for us to have a place here where we can train our own crew. Next slide, please. And if we just go in detail and look at some of the uh, important uh, statements that have been sent and some of the indicators within this sector that can make us understand and uh, know where we are going to. One of the statements from uh, uh, the ICAO uh, Board of Directors about the alarming trends in Africa uh, reaching uh, crisis proportions, he, he, he highlighted that the Secretary General, of course, of, of ICAO, that air transport cannot just be looked upon like an economic enabler. Uh, but also as a catalyst that will help uh, make the African economy grow. And by so doing, of course, uh, some other presenters have spoken of the indirect and the direct uh, effects they will have on the continent. But above that, we need to ensure that for air transport to meet this objective, it must have the qualified people to do that. And some of the indicators that you can see to understand why there is an urgent need to have specialized training centers that can give us the qualified manpower is that there's always an exodus of skilled manpower, insufficient training capacities, uh, inadequate regulatory framework. Uh, we look the high cost of training. That doesn't even need any explanation because we know what it is, uh, especially for uh, the Central and West African sub-region where uh, most, that is where your revenue comes in and then you have to export that revenue to another area of the world for, for training. That is usually very costly for traveling, for, for, for hotel accommodations, and visa processing, and all whatnot. We know what it takes. And of course, this will always lead us to uh, not being able to be in conformity with all the necessary ISAPs, even the ISAPs from ICAO, or even those from IATA, or other industry players. And, and when that happens, the obvious thing is that there's a poor state to state coordination. And a poor state to state coordination has a huge impact on operators. You would imagine that you have two uh, countries that are just close neighbors, but a pilot cannot be able to fly from one country or to the other. If he, if he moves from one operator in this country to the other, the license has either to be revalidated, has to be converted and all of that. And all of these processes take so much. But if we have a training center that is within the region and all the civil aviation authorities come to the same understanding, they can have a single process to manage all of this and that would streamline and automate the process of licensing and that will help both the operators and the regulator for oversight. Next slide please. Captain, any comment? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we, if we look again at some of the challenges that uh, the African aviation sector has, uh, especially at the level of infrastructures, we would see that there is just so much. And uh, this has further been compounded by the growth of, uh, uh, by the health pandemic, COVID-19, and uh, travel restrictions that have uh, been uh, imposed on travelers from Africa to other parts of the world, and then the lack of connectivity between certain areas and all of that. This leads to loss of time, loss of so many important things. And um, also, uh, for African airlines to be able to reduce their costs, or to save their costs or to uh, minimize their costs and make it as effective as possible, there is that need to have a regional training organization where even hotel reservations and every other thing could also be managed within that sub-region and that would be easier. Uh, and of course, the capacity building, which is insufficient, if you look at it in ratio to the market, you see that there's a high demand. There are so many airlines, so many operators, uh, airports and all of that but the qualified people that can come and man these operations that can also assure safety and security are not there. So we would, it's imperative to have a training organization that can 
give us uh, the qualified manpower. And of course, when we talk about the lack of this infrastructure, it goes without saying, you would also not have specialized instructors because you don't have these facilities to train people, then there are no instructors. Because there are no instructors, you, we would depend on instructors of different regions or of different areas. But we know we've all said it and so very well, uh, Africa should be capable of solving its own problems. African problems with African solutions. So if we have our own instructors who understand the realities in Africa, who understand the operating challenges of Africa, it's easy for them to, to, to package and customize uh, 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 pro programs that would meet and fit the objective of the aviation sector in Africa. Of course, the high cost of uh, uh, recruitment, uh, most uh, companies or operators in Africa uh, still rely on uh, having uh, expert services for them to do certain uh, specialized functions. Whereas we think that the African youth and uh, are really intelligent enough and just need the opportunity to get themselves trained and then we'll be able to solve this problem at the level of Africa. And of course, without uh, this uh, capacity to train people, to keep them and uh, retain their talents, there's always this uh, problem of career management where somebody starts probably uh, as a pilot in an organization or maybe starts like a dispatcher or whatever but there's no clear plan in front of him where he's going to. And at the end of the day, either he moves to another industry or there's a high turnover, he moves from one company to the other. So we think that having a training organization, this would be very, very important. Next slide, please. Just one, uh, I'm sorry about this. I just want to make one comment on the last point, uh, which is actually related to the comment that uh, our different role made earlier uh, when you compare the brain drain and then uh, our Ebola management brain as opposed to expert, uh, export exper expertise. Uh, uh, during my uh, little exposure to, to, to fleet management for um, the fleet of LM9 in Western Central Africa, uh, we, were, we were seriously affected uh, by uh, uh, um, the, the number of, of resignation or turn, uh, turnover uh, uh, from the crew leaving for the, should I say, greener pasture. So uh, we need to understand something. The reality on the continent uh, when it comes to career management is, uh, uh, is uh, seriously connected to the way uh, we as Africans are dealing with the uh, HR, HR, HR aspect of the industry. Uh, I've been exposed to some operation whereby we are losing uh, talent, uh, we are losing, we have lost talent, we have lost uh, uh, investment that airlines have made on, the, on, the, on some local content who actually went to uh, Middle East career or, or Europe, etc. Uh, because uh, we did not have the proper uh, HR management policy and structure to make sure that the talent is, is, is kept in-house. So the reality is that we do not understand, uh, as airline manager, the, the cost of losing a particular talent. We know how to train them. We know how to spend money on the simulator. They grow expertise within the, within the operation. Uh, um, and then they contribute to the work of the airline. But when comes a time where we need to do a, a career management program, career progression, uh, the airline is unable to do so because they believe that it will be an extra cost to them and uh, or they do not have within their reach the tool to actually upgrade that particular capacity and it, 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 that human capacity. And that is actually leading to the, the human capital being frustrated. And that human capital, that pilot, that cabin crew, that engineer now decide to go overseas. That's the reason why uh, it's important to understand that that Capacity building is not only technical, but it is aiming at, uh, at also uh, improving the way we are looking at uh, uh, HR, HR policy and strategy. And it was highlighted recently by uh, Anayata HR report, which, uh, high, which brought to light the importance of uh, uh, you know, talent retention. Thank you, Moses. Thank you. Okay. The next slide, please. Just go ahead. Okay, um, thank you, Captain. Uh, let me just continue. And um, uh, this project that is uh, uh, looked upon to be in Ghana, uh, if we look at 
where Ghana is situated, and we look at the African map that is just to your right, you would see that uh, usually uh, the training organizations in the northern part of Africa, northeastern part, and the southern part of Africa. But within the Central and West African sub-region, uh, there is an acute shortage of real training organizations or training centers that can help in building the capacities of uh, airline operators. And so there's a huge gap here, and this gap needs to be covered. Because if you look at the region itself, how many countries that are there, and the level of integration that is within this country, the population growth, uh, the, 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 the economies of this country, you know that the air transport sector would grow. However, without a commensurate growth in, in, in providing qualified people, there would be a problem. And most of a good junk of the training within uh, airlines that are in this sub-region is either done in the eastern, northeastern part of Africa, southern, or at the Middle East or in Europe. And this, apart from the fact that there are travel uh, restrictions and so many other things, uh, the fact that we do, uh, you receive your revenue probably in CFA or some local currency, and your expenditures are more again in dollars because what we would try to do is also to reduce uh, a kind of uh, natural financial hedging that dollar cost equals to dollar expenditure because if you do the, the, the revenue here in our local currencies and everything that we have to spend again is in a foreign currency we know what that entails already in an industry that is capital intensive and if you look at the current training capacities there within this region is largely insufficient and cannot meet the projected growth within this area. And uh, there's a significant travel uh, distance for people leaving this area, either to go to Europe, to the Middle East, or to Northeastern or Southern Africa for training. And so this has a huge impact on the, the, the airlines because at some moment there will be some lagging activities because the crew members are not available, they're looking for slots to be trained, and they have to travel, they're looking for visas and all of that. So it has a huge impact on the airline. And so the, the importance of a training organization within this area cannot be overemphasized because it will come a long way to, to reduce the cost of training, which is one of the most important in an airline. The next slide, please. And just to make us have an overview of what we have seen so far, uh, we understand that with uh, COVID-19, so many things have been happening and the industry uh, had some kind of recession because people were not traveling, which is normal. But that has not stopped uh, major players from investing in training because uh, building capacity and preparing people to come back with a recovery is very essential. And keeping that uh, ability is what uh, most of these people have been doing, or most of these organizations have been doing. And that is why in Nigeria, you would see that the, the, the College of Aviation recently acquired a 737 full flight simulator. You go to Egypt Air Training Center, they recently acquired also an A320 full flight simulator. In Saudi Arabia, in the, the Oxford uh, Training Center, an A320 full simulator. You go to the Gulf Aviation Academy, the same thing. Uh, and you, if you go to Europe, major players like the BAA Training Center have announced they are going to open a new training center in Spain. And in the US too, you also have Avengers Flight Group opens new simulator training centers in Spain and in Poland. Uh, why do, is this important? This is for us to understand that in as much as uh, the, the industry has difficulties uh, today because of uh, the, the, the present health situation, there is a projected uh, uh, growth rate that everybody in the industry is looking at. And Africa cannot, uh, by any means, stay again behind and wait for other regions to get themselves ready and, and get everything at their own level. So uh, for us to be ready to take the challenge and take the opportunity when it comes, we must also invest in training and get ourselves ready. And for that to happen, the Central and West African sub-region needs to have a training center that can meet the need of uh, the aviation industry in that sector. Captain, you have control. Thank you very much, Mando. Yes, I have control. Next slide, please. So what are we looking at? I'm sure that uh, I mean, we read uh, a few comments from the audience saying that they want to have uh, more, you know, end on uh, brief about the projects. 
So we are looking at a, a full ATO, an aviation training organization, which will have the capability to train a fly crew, cabin crew, uh, uh, engineers, uh, airport staff, uh, management staff, etc. So uh, obviously, the highest investment will lie uh, within the, uh, the acquisition uh, of, uh, of simulators. Um, so uh, it will be located in uh, the heart of Accra, uh, within the vicinity of uh, Potoka International Airport, uh, thanks to the involvement uh, as, a, as an equity shareholder uh, from the Ghana Airport Limited Company. Uh, we recently, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, are a part of uh, AFRA as an uh, associated member, which we are very happy about. So the training center will be having initially a 4B with 737 simulator NG, a classic Embraer 145 and or Airbus A320 or Q400, uh, depending on uh, the final uh, study and negotiation we have with the current uh, owner and manufacturer. But we are also looking at uh, uh, installing fixed base simulator. As you know now, um, the EASA regulation, the FAA, and then subsequently the African one, uh, uh, in uh, considering uh, uh, the importance of the flight, the FTD field based simulator, which have become more and more efficient when it comes to pilot training. If I'm not mistaken now, uh, when a pilot is doing a, a full type rating in, the, in, uh, in Europe, about uh, a good percentage of the simulator training can be performed in the, uh, on a fixed base, an FDS. Again, that allowed the training of its own to be uh, way cheaper than it used to be. Uh, cabin crew training uh, simulator as well with the sliding doors. I'm sure that you can see a picture on the, on the right hand side. Uh, it will, I believe that it will be the first training center uh, in Africa uh, to be confirmed, but I'm pretty convinced that will be the case, uh, to have a motion based uh, a cabin crew simulator. So as you can see on the picture, um, you ha we will have sliding doors, you know, with the, what uh, most of the doors uh, the train simulator has. But you also have the capability to generate a smoke in the smoke in the cabin and then turbulence to make sure that the future uh, cabin crew uh, uh, staff are actually ready to be uh, to attend to any situation that may occur during the flight. Uh, the training that are currently being done worldwide uh, are standard, but we are trying to be uh, very uh, avant-garde and, uh, and, and, uh, and have an innovative skill. Uh, so indeed, yes, we are creating an aviation solution for African Airlines, but the same way African Airlines were traveling miles away to actually train in Europe, obviously uh, the training center will also be more than happy and then we'll be equipped to receive you know, European airlines. Uh, we, need to, we, need to, we need to understand what uh, the impact of such a solution will have uh, on, on the regional economy. Because we, as Africans, when we are going to Europe, we are doing the training, but we're also attending to all the, the sites, uh, entertainment, uh, uh, shopping malls, etc. In Nigeria, we have shopping malls. In Accra, we have shopping malls. So uh, it would be very interesting to see as well, uh, based on the standard that we are going to have for the ATO, when now European and then American and South Asia, whatever, when they open their routes uh, uh, in Africa, will come and perform the training with our training center. Okay? So let's not be shy about doing it. Next slide, next slide, please. So, um, that particular slide can kind of cover uh, the methodology that we have used for this project management. Uh, during operation in Ghana, uh, we had the opportunity to analyze the current supply chain in the, on the uh, entire African training ecosystem, which was uh, very much straightforward considering the very limited uh, option. So a feasibility study was done with some airlines and then we have run uh, CEOs, COO interviews to understand their training challenges. And subsequently, uh, some of the airline actually uh, sent us some LOIs. Some, the LOIs were very comforting and then actually built up at our level uh, high uh, confidence uh, uh, states. 
We uh, present that project to the Minister of Aviation in Ghana, uh, after which an exclusive MOU was signed to uh, ensure that um, that particular, uh, that innovative uh, project will be based in uh, Accra, uh, but will aim at attracting uh, um, the market within the entire continent. Uh, Afra endorsed project, as I'm sure that you know, and not being uh, expert into uh, the ATO business, we uh, outsource the expertise of a European ATO business development unit, which assist, who, uh, which assist us in doing the, the financial modeling. A couple of weeks ago, a uh, request for proposal has been sent to 45 strate potential strategic partners worldwide, uh, 45 ATOs and manufacturer, and then uh, it was overwhelming to, uh, to see that more than 90% of their feedback was uh, um, uh, very positive. Uh, we are currently reviewing the proposals sent by them, uh, from the biggest operator to the one that personally I was not aware that were existing, uh, but uh, uh, we too, which have a, a good, should I say, grip on their, on their niche market, especially in Asia. Uh, and those proposals are being reviewed right now. A uh, very few ones were unable to, um, to embark on the project due to the, the, the impact of the COVID-19, obviously, on their operation. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the market is big enough to actually consider future partnership with anyone. So um, after the securing of the strategic partner, we will complete the capital raising as we are talking to regional banks, private equity firm, uh, in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, uh, this is ongoing. And all things being equal, we are hoping that uh, the project will be launched at the end of 2020, early 2021, um, kick off the facility uh, uh, construction, uh, first quarter of 2021, and then uh, uh, request for training from airline uh, mid uh, to flood with end of 20, uh, 2021. Uh, if everything slides normally. Next slide, please. Just to overview about what uh, the project uh, will cost, uh, we are looking at about 20 to 25 million uh, an envelope as a global investment. But indeed, that particular, the capex element of the project will reduce uh, depending on uh, the type of equipment, the valuation of equipment that uh, the strategic partner will come uh, will bring into the, the, the game. Uh, right now, we have had some offers, uh, ATOs willing to relocate one or two simulators and then uh, get involved in the project as an equity shareholder. Um, and then, so yeah, we are looking at uh, uh, all the options available. It's very important uh, that we, uh, we acknowledge the fact that uh, uh, what is of interest here is not the involvement of the biggest player necessarily or, or, uh, in, in the world, not necessarily. Uh, we are looking at the suitable strategic partner, a strategic partner which will be able to understand the, the African culture, to understand uh, how um, uh, uh, the project need to be implemented, to make sure that uh, uh, they create a bridge program between all local expertise and raise it, should I say, to a certain standard, mix the best uh, of both worlds, uh, the, 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 Western, the Western world and the African world, etc. So we are very careful about that as well. Also, uh, as, a, as a consultancy company, uh, we have been approached to attend to other type of business. Uh, uh, FBO, uh, private jet operation, etc. But those projects are put on hold because uh, we do not want to be in a situation whereby we put the car before the horse. That particular uh, uh, aviation training capacity will actually be, uh, a, 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 should I say, a, a manufacturing unit that will constantly produce pilot cabin crew engineers. Uh, staff at the airport who then are going to be the human capital of the FBO and the MRO, etc. Otherwise, we are exposing the, any other project to a risk of, uh, of failure by um, getting involved the, the human resource that is not really prepared and equipped and qualified, 
and also maybe increasing the cost of human capital by bringing European expertise, the Asian expertise, or African uh, or American expertise, which come at the cost, as I'm sure you're aware. So um, indeed, this is a vital investment for a fast-growing region. As you can see, investment is not except, except I mean, it's not very much uh, uh, high compared to other projects, but uh, the impact that it could have on the continent could be huge. Next slide. When it comes to simulator and certification, obviously um, the priority the priority certification will be for the training center to be uh, Ghana approved by the GCAA, uh, where the simulator will be will be uh, the simulator training will be uh, uh, located. Nevertheless, uh, 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 the idea is for that particular training center to be approved by all African CAA. Uh, Nigeria, uh, uh, Ivory Coast, Senegal, uh, uh, Rwanda, Ethiopia, Kenya, so on and so forth. Um, although, when it comes to uh, Kenya, for example, in Ethiopia, uh, which already have their, their training center uh, with a huge capacity, um, at the present time, it is we cannot foresee only a few players, you know, uh, uh, taking uh, uh, control or taking uh, uh, um, uh, having the full capacity to attend to the what the whole African market will uh, will be uh, will be uh, coming up with when it comes to training equipment. Uh, I think one of our participants, I think it was Bereket, asking about the uh, non-technical um, uh, training portfolio that we're going to have. So in future partnership with Afra and Ayata, uh, we are looking also at delivering. Uh, all the courses that you have when it comes to ground operation, quality management, safety management, QHAC, very important now with the COVID-19 pandemic impact. Uh, now we are also anticipated on the future. Uh, uh, we are aware of what could be the threat of the, um, the cyber attack, if I'm not mistaken. So we also need to prepare the youth to actually attend to this particular threat in the future. We will be also looking at the implementation of virtual reality training, as I'm sure that you're aware, this is the new channel of training, etc. Uh, EASA, of course, if we want European airlines to come and train with us and enjoy our, our tourism hospitality, we need to have an EASA approved training center. And the same with the FAA, which is uh, most of the airlines are also connecting more with Africa. And Keo Trainer Plus uh, has, uh, has connected with IATA as well. When it comes to simulator uh, devices, uh, they will have, we're looking at having level D simulator with UPRT capability, offset recovery training capability, PBN as well, uh, to make sure that uh, all pilots, all cabin crew, etc., uh, know exactly how to uh, perform the aircraft with the new uh, aviation regulation that will optimize flight routing and optimize now fuel consumption for reducing uh, of uh, CO2 emissions. So uh, I think that covers that particular presentation slide. Next. Now, what are the benefits that we're expecting of the implementation of such a project? When it comes to airline, based on our current studies and then um, uh, financial review, et cetera, we're expecting that depending on the volume of training, an airline could save up to two, from 20 to 35% when it comes to overall training costs. Not only uh, it is obviously very important in this time of COVID-19, where most of the operators are cash drained, so that is nobody who should actually turn down opportunity, but we also increase the pilot productivity. As um, um, uh, Mr. Riyad was actually saying earlier, a lot of crew, um, including I, 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 I'm one of them, we used to actually go to Europe for two or three days of training, but spending actually one week. On, uh, in Europe, which, uh, which was uh, affecting the scheduling of the airline when in, especially in time of crisis. So the crew productivity is looking at being increased. Um, uh, the reduction of administrative burden as well uh, when it comes to visa application. Uh, we have had training uh, uh, cancelled because uh, one particular embassy did not actually provide this visa on time for the pilot. So the airline was losing tickets the airline was losing cost of uh, visa application, and then uh, the whole schedule of the airline was being disrupted. So we mentioned earlier, uh, as well, Ghana being, uh, uh, what is it, 
is not actually visa free. You have to actually pay visa upon arrival. But for uh, for ECOWAS members, it is visa free indeed. EASA, uh, FA training standard uh, uh, regionally. Uh, some of us are also members of IFALPA, um, uh, which are also provided guidance on how to equip simulators and how to uh, you know, uh, calibrate them. Uh, cabin crew training, dispatch training course with modern equipment. We have the capability or to also to initiate confidently uh, uh, ab initial program, a campaign in partnership with this ATO, but also the other flight school that we have in the region. I will come to that on the next slide. And then opportunity of you to associate ATOs to do assessment, recruitment, and then uh, uh, take technical gap uh, analysis uh, for some particular piece. What about the airport? Everything regarding ground operation, uh, QHSC safety training with hand-on approach with more realistic scenario. It is uh, very rare to, uh, to uh, personally, I've never seen uh, an airport uh, training department uh, merging their training uh, with, for, for example, an airline. Uh, well, they have a, a few options like this, but uh, we will we also look at different scenarios where every stakeholder involving into, let's say, emergency response will come together and actually improve their, their, their policy and their, and their, and their uh, SOPs. Um, capability to join, uh, to create joint aviation training program with all our stakeholders, of course. And then very important, especially on the continent, uh, improve the customer service program of our, of our service provider. Uh, what about the civil aviation authority? Uh, as Mr. Tanote was stating earlier, uh, the continent is lacking of uh, uh, inspectors that will be uh, sufficient in terms of numbers and qualified enough to actually make sure that we are not falling behind the growth. So uh, we have flight operation inspector, which are most of the case former airline pilot. Um, uh, so there is a need to make sure that they are aware with the latest trend, uh, the PBN, uh, ETOPS, uh, MNPS, uh, and so on. So we are looking at partnering with civil aviation authorities in the region so that they include a more hand-on approach by uh, allowing the inspector to do simulator training to understand how the PBN works, to understand how uh, crossing the Atlantic with the latest avi avionic technology work, etc. Um, and then obviously uh, there is much more area of discussion to cover with them. Run handling companies, which is really much related to also the airport, we discussed that. The ATC, the ATC um, as Mr. Amin was stating earlier, uh, the Ghana Aviation, Civil Aviation Academy uh, covers pretty much uh, uh, a lot of training related to, uh, to ATC. So uh, by combining our resources or our efforts, there would be an opportunity to have uh, um, one location where all the training, regardless of the position, could be attended to. Next. So it is very, it's also very important to understand that the, AT, the ATO that we are currently working on does not come in, no, in any way as a competition with the, the ATO in the region. Uh, when you look at um, some civil aviation regulation books, you have ATO of different level, ATO level one, level two, level three, etc. Uh, uh, it depends on the, the regulation. So uh, in, in Western Central Africa, we are aware of the fly school. There are fly school uh, in Dakar, a fly school in Nigeria, fly school uh, in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in Ivory Coast, etc. So, but there is absolutely no training center providing simulator training uh, uh, capability. Uh, in Nigeria, NGAT, Zaria, I recently acquired a 77 full flight simulator, uh, but uh, it is aimed at uh, pro uh, providing training in house for their for their for their ab initial program, or they are looking at doing MDL licensing, etc. So, the ATU that we are going to implement and position in Accra will fo will fall perfectly into the current ecosystem or say, supply chain of, uh, of training. Flight school, the ATO was missing, and the airline. 
So you, uh, any candidates we were going to be developing program with and then make sure that they're willing uh, uh, financing from banks, etc., will be able to start their PPL, do the simulator training uh, in Accra, for example, and then proceed to the airline. That will obviously reduce, reduce the cost of training, and that will also allow uh, financial institution with our support, you know, to release uh, a fund for for cadet uh, and, and and for funding for, for whoever want to actually uh, involve into uh, make a study into aviation. So indeed, we are looking at a full ecosystem alliance with the current players. Next. Why Ghana? That is a question that has come up a lot of times uh, during the discussion with uh, the strategic partner. Um, uh, Ghana has the advantage, uh, the huge advantage, uh, to have to be uh, one of the most um, efficient uh, uh, CAA. It has one of the most efficient, if it's not the most efficient CAA on the continent. According to the last uh, ICVM report, uh, the GCAA has scored 89.9%, which is the highest uh, by an African country. So as you can see, um, uh, it is absolutely normal on top of the fact that uh, AFRA was actually created in, uh, in Accra. Uh, it is absolutely normal that uh, uh, we, uh, we partner with the best CA in Africa to actually implement such an innovative and bold project. Um, uh, it is indeed a government endorsed without being a government project, it's a private project. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the GACL is investing uh, as an equity shareholder um, uh, on the project providing um, uh, real estate uh, surface within the airport. Ghana has a strong political stability, strong banking system, and a strong legal system. Some of the partner, some of the potential strategic partners have requested to make some uh, field trip to discuss with the GCA and the banks to have a look at uh, how secure will be their investment uh, should they decide to relocate the, some of their assets to, uh, to Ghana. So we are working on, on that too with some of them. And indeed, uh, Ghana as well has been recognized by the World Bank uh, as the best place of doing business in the Oakwoods region. Um, they have had a very good management of COVID-19. Uh, I was there recently and then the process of COVID-19 at the airport was, uh, was uh, exemplary. And then it has attracted as well and keep continue to attract uh, a lot of FDIs. Uh, we record a number of $700 million in the first six months of 2020 despite the COVID-19 pandemic. So that is for Africa, Ghana. Next slide. So pretty much this is what the project is about. Um, as you can uh, imagine, uh, it is an innovative and bold project um, that we initiated a couple of months ago, but uh, it is uh, quite overwhelming to see the level of interest that we have uh, from the aviation stakeholder, from AFRA, uh, from you now attending that seminar at uh, such a high number. And then uh, we hope that uh, you guys will be able to uh, provide us any insight you may have on this particular project. So thank you very much, Maureen. Thank you very much, uh, Captain and uh, Moses, for your presentation of the project in detail. Uh, we now proceed to open the floor for any questions comments that you may have and um, we'll start off. Uh, we have a question from uh, Jean-Francois. Uh, at what stage of the project do you plan to introduce fixed based stimulators? Okay, uh, thank you, Francois, for Jean Francois, for your for your project, uh, for your question. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the FBS, uh, the FBS will be introduced uh, um, at the at the early stage uh, because uh, well, there it's easier to implement uh, and it will part of uh, of uh, to be approved um, uh, to be approved uh, 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 training syllabus that will soon be presented to uh, to uh, to the GCAA. Uh, in collaboration with uh, with a future strategic partner, so um, it is planned to have it at the early stage. So uh, some of the courses will start being uh, run, 
uh, while we are actually implementing uh, and then uh, uh, putting in place the, the full flash simulators. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, from uh, Joao George, uh, the question is, uh, is it possible to add maintenance and other aviation specific training to this great project? Will it include e-learning on matters possible like CRM, upset, etc.? Thank you, Rao, and again, thank you very much for your support on this project. Uh, yes, the e-training is, uh, is, uh, is mandatory, um, not only because it's efficient, it, uh, but also because uh, it's the new trend. Uh, we will be able to actually dispense a lot of training online, uh, CRM, AFSET, uh, and, and any other course. Uh, we are even looking at uh, setting a partnership with the uh, 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 aviation management institution. Uh, I'm just saying out loud, it could be uh, Emirates Aviation College, it could be uh, Data Aviation College, uh, ENAC, Emory Riddle, City University, or whatever. There is a wide scope of course that we can provide within, within a classroom. Uh, and yes, indeed, maintenance and other aviation uh, specific training will also be looked at. Um, uh, as you know, uh, maintenance training are now are quickly moving to the virtual reality. Uh, so uh, we are discussing now with VR providers to uh, see how uh, we can discuss, we can start discussing with the GCAA and other civil authority to uh, understand the benefit of uh, virtual reality uh, so that um, maintenance training could be attended to um, in a very efficient and modern uh, manner. But before that, yes, the typical B1, B2, uh, EASA or equivalent uh, engineering licensing will be, uh, will be performed uh, in, uh, both te um, theoretically and practically. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we, ha we have uh, from uh, Brian, I think you had earlier asked about uh, whether we do a press release. Just to inform you, Brian, uh, the time of the launch of the project um, officially uh, we'll uh, do uh, an, an event, a press conference, uh, where we'll uh, announce to the industry uh, the loadable launch. And uh, your next question is, has the project been launched? If not, so when? Well, I, I think we covered that earlier. Uh, we are finalizing the stage of uh, reviewing the RFPs. Um, so, uh, as far as we are concerned, the project has been launched in our mind a few years ago. But uh, we are looking at kicking off the building construction uh, by Q1 2021. Thank you very much. Um, and then uh, Osama Al Sayed asks I would like to know more about the Anchor Airline clients and uh, LOIs. Yes, uh, Osama, hi. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, yes, so we have been running uh, CEOs, uh, CEO interviews over the past couple of months, and then some LOIs uh, um, uh, were secured. Obviously, uh, because of time constraint, uh, not all the airlines were attended to because it was very much uh, uh, time consuming. And that's the, one of the reasons why we actually um, uh, decided to embark with AFRA. So, uh, cor correct me if I'm mistaken, uh, uh, Maureen, but the idea with AFRA as well is to uh, facilitate the process of securing LOIs from specific airlines uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, to have uh, a higher level of, of, of commitment, especially as we move on. Nevertheless, the LOIs that have been secured now, the, the volume of training that we have captured to do the financial model are uh, factual. We didn't come up with figures you know, out of our head. Uh, uh, those, those discussions were carried out by airlines who actually provided us the numbers, especially when it comes to classic simulator and where 145 and 727 NG. So when it comes to the implementation of those simulators, the two priority simulators will be the classic and the E145. The third one will be the NG as now the max uh, has been allowed to resume flight in the US. The as is still a bit um, uh, reviewing the, 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 the decision. Uh, so yeah, we are, there, is, there is an ongoing process, so we are monitoring. 
So it will be a two-stage approach, um, FBS and two FFS, and then uh, FFS for the other one uh, coming later on. Thank you very much. Uh, again, from Brian, who is in charge of uh, the simulator center project? Is it AFRA or Kodi? The ownership of uh, the ownership of the project will be um, private equity uh, 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 or um, uh, bank or private investor slash uh, slash um, GACL uh, slash Prodigy uh, and other strategic partners we are going to look at. So um, uh, there will be. Uh, technical involvement from some stakeholders, shareholders, and both financial slash asset involvement as well from, from others. Uh, we are looking at consolidating the best expertise that we have in Africa. So um, the market, the potential is big enough not to be uh, having a narrow vision about this project. So, yes, thank you. Okay, uh, another question from Victor Egon. Yeah, is to uh, involve, of course, the, um, the GCAA and um, the strategic partner who is going to uh, invest in the 77. So we are going to treat to create a. Sorry again. Is he okay now? Yes, It's okay. Uh, sorry, guys. I think that we, I think that we, we have. Uh, we have uh, okay. I think that we have had a uh, slight technical uh, error. Uh, so uh, yes, Captain Victor, um, we are looking at creating uh, uh, um, a full certification bridge program. Uh, uh, between the GCAA and then the authority of the ATO that will be investing into uh, for, for the simulator uh, 77. Um, we are fully aware that certification of certain training will require the, the, the local regulation um, the, to, be, to be reviewed, to be upgraded, to capture exactly the process of certifying, calibrating, uh, an FFS or an FTD. So this is a greenfield project, but just like we have had many in the past, uh, um, uh, we are going to connect, uh, for example, the EASA uh, unit who is overseeing the strategic partner 77 simulator to actually uh, uh, share the expertise and knowledge and regulation with the, with the GCA. So this is something that we are actually um, uh, uh, looking at very closely from the regulatory standpoint to have an approved training program for you know, supervision, maintenance, and then calibration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain. The next question uh, from uh, Bereket uh, from Ethiopia. How much interest, cooperation, and collaboration exemplified by the stakeholders? Uh, I think how much is the interest exemplified by the stakeholders? And uh, he continues, were you able to consolidate their strategic plan to draft the strategic roadmap? Yes, thank you, Bereket. Uh, uh, the interest is, uh, is uh, high when it comes to this particular project uh, from the different stakeholders as I'm sure that uh, you have been able to, uh, to, I hope that you have been able to appreciate. So um, the strategic plan has been drafted, uh, but there are still some, um, should I say, some key elements that need to be uh, attended to, uh, uh, especially when it comes to the, the, the type of strategic partner that will involve into the project. So uh, we attend, we send an RFP to 45 different strategic partners. Uh, the majority of them re respond positively. So now we actually have a daunting task to reviewing them individually, attending uh, to uh, different uh, um, 
a video call like this one uh, to make sure that they, they fully appreciate the project and understand exactly what is their own expectation. So the full strategic and, and final strategic plan uh, is, has been drafted but um, has not been yet completed because we obviously the strategic partner have a major role to play in that particular uh, roadmap for Africa. Thank you very Thank you. much. Um, another question again from Osama. I believe that you have a lot of issues in common between the Middle East and Africa, and it's important that the base is correct, such as uh, the price of devices, financing options and costs, and the instructor availability for locals. Um, is a proposal partner allowed to enter into the discussions? Uh, thank you, Osama. I think, well, of course, uh, uh, the financial model that we have used uh, is based on the current contract that most of the African airlines have with ATOs. As a matter of fact, our financial model was extremely conservative because we want to make sure that we are not actually uh, 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 um, uh, having a, a sentimental, emotional approach of the project. So yes, uh, there is a huge opportunity for synergies. As a matter of fact, a couple of days ago, we had a partner who, uh, who owns a 737 Classic and mentioned that uh, that's the uh, only simulator that he or she could uh, could invest, but he or she is open to allowing another partner to come with other assets. So there are so many ways that particular project could be structured. So in particular, uh, when it comes to um, the, your, your entity, um, um, the partner, we are, that, that this is the time right now, of course, to enter into discussion, to uh, send proposal, and then uh, as a matter of fact, we are expecting uh, the proposal of your entity very soon, I hope. Uh, and then discuss uh, with the subject partner the best option for the remaining equipment when it comes to acquisition. Um, the local banks are, are been, have been approached and discussed, they're very keen about it. The private uh, investment institution as well very keen about it. But again, we need to go stage by stage. Uh, yes, I agree with Brian as well when it comes to uh, maybe thinking that uh, the project is uh the timeline would have to be slightly reviewed uh that is only because uh the rfp that were sent out to the strategic partners uh, more than 60 percent of uh, of them are, re are requested for extension uh because they wanted to find through the proposal which is a good sign so um the continent have been waiting more than 50 years and 100 years i think we can wait a couple of months to have uh, an innovative project that will transform the continent thank you Thank you very much for your response. Uh, and then the other question is regarding the, the, the forecasts and uh, okay. yes, uh, Junior uh, Kidanda asks, thank you, Captain, for the details you went through. And uh, with COVID, do you think the forecast of uh, on planning is still valid? Yes, the, well, when it comes to the construction, uh, there is local expertise on the ground. Um, uh, the borders of uh, Accra are, are open uh, when, if I want to follow my roadmap, our roadmap. Uh, and then there is local expertise on the ground to start the construction, etc. Now, uh, what will be required from the strategic partner and us, obviously, is to be on the ground to have a supervision level uh, uh, um, uh, when it comes to uh, facility construction standard, etc. But um, uh, you as an airline manager and just like many others have uh, run um, uh, the, the crisis management of your airline and others through zoom calls etc so uh, we will do the same uh, it's going to be intense it's going to be challenging um, but uh, the project was the sacrifice uh, uh, and the time uh, as i'm sure you know as well uh, there are good news we hope down the line with the um, the vaccine coming out as well. There are like three or four different uh, options that are coming that are really coming to the market. Let's just hope that um, you know the the, the the organization or the entity that are probably would not want to fast track it. You know, uh, but uh, there is light uh, at the end of the channel. Uh, um, nevertheless, um, the project, uh, the aviation group is undeniable. Therefore, uh, the increase of capacity building should go in, uh, in alliance, in, in partnership, and in parallel with the group. 
So let's just be slightly proactive. The training center could be, will be uh, constructed. And then uh, we will make sure that the connectivity uh, with Accra, with the other airlines, partner airlines, will allow, uh, will allow all the clients to come and then contribute to the growth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just checking whether we have any questions that have been uh, unanswered from the floor. Um, earlier on, we had the question for Afra. Uh, when we plan to use the, 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 the instructor that uh, the instructors that have gone through this Afra project uh, for developing trainers for Africa, so you so could answer that. Uh, this is uh, actually ongoing because, uh, as you know, uh, before we initiate the development of these 100 uh, 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 instructors. We have been already providing uh, courses, uh, so obviously we are adding uh, to our pool of instructors this new one. So we are currently uh, providing training. You can go on Afra website and you will see uh, what is uh, scheduled. And if you are, your need is not on the schedule, please do send a message to our uh, manager uh, training and uh, we will organize. We organize uh, currently wherever uh, the, there is evening, uh, the borders are open. If we need to go there, we organize training. And uh, we also provide training, obviously, uh, using this type of facility remotely. Thank you very much. Uh, we encourage all participants to get in touch with AFRA uh, training manager for any inquiries they may have. Uh, not just on this ATO project, but uh, on their training needs. And uh, looking that we don't have any open questions that have been uh, unanswered, and we do not have any other um, hands from the floor, uh, we can now proceed to the next item. Um, so before we do the wrap up, we are happy to announce that. Uh, Engineer Charles Kraikwe. Uh, pardon, uh, Mr. Kwakwa from uh, GSEL um, is with us and uh, he was not able to join us at the beginning of the webinar. So he's able to give us uh, some remarks before we um, give the floor to Mr. to Engineer Charles Kraikwe. Mr. Kwakwa, you have the floor for your remarks. Go back to the slide. Uh, okay. Mr. Kwakwa, you have the floor. Um, I think we do not we don't have it have him on the on the list. Uh, as we wait for um, Mr. Kwakwa, I think we could proceed to Engineer Craigwe. Uh, but uh, we, we are not able to hear you. Mr. Kwakwa, we have you on the list of the panelists, but we cannot hear your audio. Please, uh, please unmute your microphone. You have the floor. Okay, I so suggest we uh, have the remarks from uh, Engineer Kraikwe as we wait for Mr. Kwakwa to uh, adjust his microphone for his remarks. Engineer Kraikwe, you have the floor.
I'm um, sorry that they are, they are yeah. trying to, they are reaching out to Mr. Park one now. Um, Neither of them is, is, uh, is on the, uh, is connected yet. <coughs> We have Mr. Kwakwa, but his microphone is not activated. Do you have uh, engineer Charles Kaito? No, 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 no. He is not on the Okay, uh, as uh, we wait for um, the two gentlemen to um, adjust their microphones for their remarks. I see we have a question, a hand raised by Tunde at the knee. Um, you have the floor for your question, comment, or remark. You have activated your microphone. Please unmute your microphone. Tunde at the knee. You had your hand raised, uh, Tunde, and uh, you have the floor. Please unmute your microphone. I think he's not able to unmute the microphone. Uh, back to Mr. Yo Kwakwa. Are you able to activate your microphone now? Okay, we have we, we, we have you on the panelists, but we, we see your microphone is not active. We can give you a couple of seconds for the technicality, are you able to reach it? Uh, let me try another option. Uh, uh, as we wait for the the team to reach uh, out to Mr. Kwakwa. Um, someone had asked about the, uh, the, the, the objective that had been set of 100 instructors to be trained within five years. Um, Mr. Konate, is this uh, a reasonable objective of ca can we do more? Well, it's, we, if we, you, we as AFRA have already invested some money of the first batch this year. Uh, we, as you have seen during the presentation, we are seeking for um, uh, financial uh, support. Of course, if we get, uh, uh, I will say, enough support, why not? We can go beyond. But, uh, but we, we, we just focus these figures based on financial constraint, I also. Okay. Uh, that had been asked by uh, Mr. Manuel Santos. I hope Mr. Manuel Santos that responds to your uh, query regarding our objective of 100 uh, instructors in five years for the project that AFRA has set in place. Uh, Mr. Osama Al Sayed adds that uh, 20 instructors a year is uh, easy to do, we believe. Uh, to tap into local airlines, retirees, pilots, and engineers. I think the issue here is the resources for, for, for this training. Captain, should we give some time to Mr. Kwakwa? Uh, yes, uh, just give it another minute, otherwise we're gonna have to round up because... Uh... Because we, we have Mr. Kwakwa on, on the list of panelists, but his microphone is not activated. Um, from uh, Tunde, Adeni, who had earlier raised their hand, um, they're asking, what is AFRA doing in order 
to assist ATOs with reducing training costs? Uh, the straightforward response is our program. <laughs> As we said, what we will do is to have them uh, disseminated throughout the continent. So if we can increase uh, these uh, instructors with various SME uh, located everywhere, so if you want to use one of them, uh, you will have them close by. So that could uh, definitely reduce your cost as well. Thank you okay. very much. I would like to attend to a question that I have done regarding a uh, send by Brian yes. uh, asking about uh, in order financing involve many partners, but which organization is running the project, meaning uh, of a seeing operation and pulling these partners together? Uh, so, Brian, as I'm sure that uh, uh, you're aware, uh, uh, it's very important for the success of this project that. Uh, every single strategic partner uh, uh, attend to their core to their core business. Okay, uh, it's all about uh, 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 corporate governance. Um, the involvement of a strategic partner is uh, is the key because um, uh, obviously we, as an aviation consultancy firm, uh, we uh, we we attend to uh, different uh, portfolio of solution, uh, but um, uh, we clearly do not have the expertise. Of uh, uh, building simulators, uh, uh, calibrating them, etc. So, uh, when uh, the strategic partner will be secured, um, um, uh, signing that MOU or the contract or the shareholding agreement will actually specify the role and obligation of every single stakeholder of the project. And most definitely, uh, uh, key po key uh, position or aspect of the operation, uh, whether it is uh, uh, technically uh, so on and so forth, uh, will be under the supervision and the monitoring of the strategic partner under the only vehicle uh, being the ATO. Uh, when it comes to commercial, etc., uh, uh, we uh, we have we have the, I can clearly tell you that uh, we have the local expertise. Uh, to know exactly how to bring a business uh, to the market, etc. But uh, like again, this is a, will be like a, a joint venture, uh, 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 an agreement among the, the, uh, us uh, and the different stakeholders, and then uh, it will be a discussion to be uh, attended to at the future board of director level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain. Uh, we have a hand raised uh, from uh, Glam Mozambique CEO Joao George. Um, I've enabled your microphone. Please ask your question. You can unmute your microphone, Joao. Hi, Joao. Yes, sir. Yes. We can hear you, Joao. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. C can you repeat, please? Just to mention that uh, we can hear you loud and clear. Please ask your question. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, first of all, of course, I'd like to uh, compliment this uh, project. It's uh, it's amazing, and I think it's something that we we really need. Uh, you know, we, we have something in, uh, in in Ethiopia, of course, that's quite uh, uh, large, and but it's all, all you know extremely uh, busy and overwhelmed, uh, and so this is great, and and I'm glad to see that. Uh, we're going to have the, the all the all capabilities across the industry. Uh, E-training e is very good. It's very important for us. We're trying to invest, uh, or at least to look for opportunities on that, to invest on equipment to change uh, our training. It's a new a new mode of uh, distributing training. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean this is basically what I was wanted to say. And uh, and uh, I mean the timing, the time frame. I, I just heard that you know all the each each stakeholder will have its own stake, but but the time frame will be very important for us. Uh, you know all the way to delivery of the of the, the training, uh, because we are planning already for our expansion. You know increasing our workforce training, uh, and that will be very important. This is basically what I wanted to. Kind of point out uh, in terms of the 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 roadmap and the and the time frame of uh, its deployment. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joao. Thank you. Joao. <laughs>
Thank you. Yeah. How do you pronounce it? Joao or Joao? Joao, yeah, Joao. I don't know how to mute myself. Okay, okay. Let me mute your microphone. Thank you very much. Fine. Uh, I now we can proceed. I'm trying to get the issue of Okay, we have Mr. Kwako's microphone, which is now active. Mr. Kwako, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, okay, all right. Um, thank you, and sorry for my in and out. I've been traveling on some uh, urgent matters. And because of my moving around, uh, my internet connection becomes weak every now and then. Anyway, um, basically, I'm happy to be here to learn our support and our commitment to the A2 project here in Ghana. Um, I, I believe the company of Ghana is agree that we are very much in support of anything to do with the growth of the aviation sector in Ghana and the sub-region, and actually uh, to the whole of Africa. So uh, in this regard, we have initiated an airport city uh, project. And one of the core projects that we want to see come to, uh, to, uh, to life is the ATO program because we see a lack of this as, um, uh, we, we see, we see uh, the absence of this facility, especially in West Africa. And therefore, uh, we are quite happy to work with um, Ascenso Capital and its partners to see to the coming to life of this uh, project. And as I indicated, the Airport City 2 project is such that the uh, um, um, the, we, we want to attract and promote people into the aviation sector. So the trading organization which would allow airlines in the South region to come to Ghana to partake the, 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 the requisite uh, retraining that is required for pilots to continue to fly the airplanes is quite important to us as we are fully in support of, of, of that. So uh, with, with Prodigy, um, not thank our stars enough for them to have contacted us and to have expressed their interest to um, uh, pardon us to uh, build this uh, to build the ATO. Now, I also have to indicate that. Um, hello. Yes. Uh, can, um, you? can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. So I, I was adding that the, another important factor is that. Um, our objective of helping the aviation sector also means that we need to make sure that again it becomes an, an attraction for all things aviation. And therefore, knowing that we, we lack a facility uh, of, a, of a training center for pilots and, and uh, air crewmen and, and others in, in the sub region. It was a key thing that the company had wanted to, to, uh, to, to, to do. So for Prodigy to have come to us, it was a godsend. And so uh, anything that we need to do to help this project to come to fruition, we are more than prepared to do so. And we also need to indicate that we are also happy that the entire sub-region and, and the entire continent is also in support. I was happy to hear that AFRA is in support of this. And to me, it was quite consistent with what AFRA wants to achieve to promote the business and make the business also strong in, in the South region to actually drive economic development in the region. And so uh, to sum up, I would say that the ATO is a welcoming project and the airport company of Ghana uh, with, with all the uh, authority in Ghana from the Ministry of Aviation as we heard from uh, Ms. Amin and the government of Ghana is fully in support of uh, of this ATO project, and I will continue to encourage everyone to lend its support to the to this ATO project. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kwapa, for your remarks and for enlightening us about uh, the current developments uh, uh, in Ghana, and uh, for appreciating.
this project and uh, for um, reaffirming your support for this project uh, between Afra and Prodigy. We are happy to have uh, Ghana on board. Now I'll proceed to the wrap up. Um, we had uh, planned to have uh, engineer Charles Craigwe to do the, uh, some remarks, but uh, we are unfortunately, um, we don't have him with us. He, was, um, he had another engagement to uh, take care of. And uh, now I'll proceed to the wrap up of the session. And before I wrap up, uh, just to acknowledge that uh, we have another uh, of AFRA member airline CEOs, uh, Mr. Patrick Mwandri of Precision Air. Uh, so today we have been uh, graced with the presence of uh, five of uh, our CEOs. Uh, Mr. Mwandri, thank you for your participation. To sum up, uh, today we have, very, uh, we have received two very informative presentations uh, from AFRA and from Prodigy. So from AFRA, we learned uh, that the, the need for highly qualified aviators will be more acute to support intra-Africa trade, tourism, and regional integration efficiently. We also uh, were informed of AFRA's initiatives to support the industry during these exceptional circumstances, in particular the nine pillar recovery plan. We also learned about how AFRA is contributing to human resource development on soft managerial skills and operational as well as safety competencies. A highlight of AFRA's program to train 100 qualified instructors in five years was presented, and uh, we are happy to um, partner with the Prodigy on uh, various areas to expand how we can support our airlines on human resource development. And uh, from uh, the presentation by AFRA, we also learned how Prodigy AFRA partnership supplements the ongoing training activities to propose a cost-effective solution to recurrent simulator training close to Western and Central Africa bases. The underlying factor here is cost-effective solution, looking at the fact that uh, it comes at a time when the industry has been adversely impacted by the COVID pandemic. From Prodigy presentation, uh, we learned about the state of the industry, uh, the shortage of training centers has always been one of the main factors. Slowing down. Uh, you mute someone's mic? Mr. Kwako, your mic is still on. Okay, I've muted the microphone. Okay. Uh, we also learned from Prodigy uh, the training challenges in Africa, such as high cost of training, limited number of permanent and specialized instructors, high cost related to recruitment, talent acquisition, skills and competencies improvement. Uh, also the aspect of poor career management program leading to high turnaround. Um, we also, from the presentation, um, received uh, ample details on this unique Ghana ATO project which will deliver advanced training courses to aspiring and professional pilots, cabin crew, aviation engineers, and managers as a concrete response, not only to the issue of aviation capacity building, but also for the airline success to a more affordable regional training option. We also uh, were informed of the progress updates of the project uh, that have been achieved thus far, notably the endorsement by the government of Ghana which is quite uh, a major uh, milestone, as well as the endorsement by AFRA. We have also um, been informed of the next steps and uh, we look forward to the launch of this project, which uh, we'll announce to our members and uh, AFRA will be contacting members on, on the engagement once we have launched the project on how now you can partake uh, and benefit from this uh, solution. All in all, this project will provide Africa an African solution to an African problem, an efficient solution to the recurrent simulator training and enable airlines to gain a competitive and sustainable advantage in the, in the operating environment at this time when we have uh, liquidity challenges being a priority. We highly appreciate the support received from the government of Ghana and look forward to the realization of the benefits of this project. AFRA Secretariat will share a copy of the slides after the webinar. 
uh, with all participants who were present during the session. Uh, before I turn off um, the, uh, the webinar, allow me to um, give one quote um, by Elena Roosevelt. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. This project is uh, 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 in the pipeline is a dream, and uh, if we achieve this dream, we'll be able to um, unlock the potential of aviation in Africa by addressing the challenges on capacity building that we are currently facing. This brings me to the end of uh, today's webinar. I wish to thank you all for participation. Thank you to Prodigy for um, making the presentation and to our AFRA team and to you, uh, our participants, for taking the time off your busy schedules to join us in this session. Um, our lines are open. Please feel free to contact us for further inquiries and engagement on your trading needs and on how you can benefit from this uh, uh, project by AFRA and Prodigy. Until uh, the next webinar, we thank you and uh, goodbye. Thank you.